Welcome to the studio. It's now, it's it's almost like 2, 2.30, all done with all of the business stuff. Took care of it. Can't, like, no more emails. I'm sick of it. It's time again for some creative stuff, for some music stuff. It's late now. I spent the entire day again with the live setup. It's so much fun. It's working so good. Everything is just like top notch. Next step is like taking all of the stuff downstairs up here and starting doing the finer mixing, tweaking of the presets, and then it'll be all entirely 100% done. So for the rest of the day, which isn't a whole lot, I would love to focus and share with you like one of my last secrets and the last secret I'll ever share, and that is how to make ARPs, good ARPs, how I make my ARPs. I'm obsessed with them. I absolutely love them. So let's maybe start with the MOOC because it has a built-in ARP. Also, please don't forget, there is still a sample pack out, very fresh. The first couple of people that get it, get it for like 50% discounted. So just check out the link down below in the description if you're interested, all of the samples, kicks, one shots that I use to make my music available for you. Now, let's actually start with like a simple chord progression. So basically, an ARP is just arpeggiator, short. An ARP is just like a chord that you don't play at the same time. So a chord is just like usually three and plus notes. This one right here barely is able to do it. It's not a polyphonic synth, it's a paraphonic synth. So it's distributed on the oscillators to each kind of note that I'm playing. But an ARP would be the same, but not all at once, just like after each other. And this was like up. You could also have like down or just going around. There are like multiple ways to play arpeggiators, but most synthesizers and most DOS have like a plugin a way to make this without playing it. Because playing an ARP, 8 notes, 16 notes, 32 notes, like in time is almost impossible. It's really hard. So this one right here has a play mode. So you just hold the chord and it will play the notes after each other for you. Very simple. If I just press down one note, Or maybe two. It switches between those. There's also a hold function so I can press down and it keeps it so I don't have to use my hands for a very long time. And we can also now switch it to the monophonic mode gives all the oscillators to one voice. And since the voices aren't playing at the same time, you can play monophonic the chord, just not everything happening at the same time. And it sounds a lot fatter. Pretty straightforward, very simple. That's the basic concept. You can now change here in the ARP section. You can change the octaves. So right now, it's just going between those three that I entered. But if I go to octave two, it plays it over two octaves and jumps up every once in a while. There's also like over three octaves. Then you have the order. Let's go through these really quick. It's um, forward, backward, and random, at least on this synth right here.
And then we got like an op right here for different sequences, one to four. And then the last is the rate, it's just speed. Um, usually it's synced to the DAW, but since it's not playing, it's not synced. But you can do some cool stuff with it. Nice, simple, that's how an ARP works. It just plays the broken up chord for you in whatever kind of fashion you set it up. I love it, because it, it makes a song harmonic and gives it a chord structure without sounding too cheesy. You know, if you have like your typical pop chords and you just play them on one and have your piano ballad and then like someone singing on top, that's nice, I love it. But for like club music, that's sometimes just too cheesy. And also like big chord jumps, the, the frequencies shift too much. It might not sound really good frequency wise. So an ARP gives you the harmonic information. It gives you a chord progression in a song and makes it more musical without making it too cheesy. That's why I love having it in songs. A lot of songs have ARPs in the background, very faded, very reverb washed out. Some have it as a main element. And you can also break up your ARP, just play it, hold it for like a fourth of a bar, then a pause, and then hold it again. There, there's a lot of creative stuff. Just set something up to be an ARP and play it and, and see what happens. You can also play a melody with an ARP setup. And if you hold something longer, it jumps somewhere else and it might give you something random you would never ever do otherwise, but make your music more interesting this way. Now let's turn around and do a little more the advanced of the processing of it if you have like a basic ARP how to take it to the next level. So that's that's my new single. It's it's, it's like it's finished. It's basically finished. Like there's still some tweaks as always, but it's basically finished. And it consists almost only of ARPs. So let's maybe go to this drop that I just, like, it wasn't there before. That's the last thing I added to just make it a little more epic. Let's um, solo some of the elements. So the sound is very basic, just one oscillator and diva and some noise. Nothing special, delay, reverb, and then the ARP right here in Logic. It's set to 16th. Downwards, variation number two, octave range two, and it makes it a little more special. Tons of delay, tons of reverb. It's a drop down section. We only have the kick and the bass, so nothing else competing. So we need to make it big and epic. I got here an LFO tool. At a side chaining, just a hint, like it's not going too deep in there because we still want to hear like the tag of the first note. We got a channel EQ getting rid of the low end, a sample delay to make it ultra wide, and a decapitator for some crunch and distortion. Then on the first bus, Valhalla Vintage Verb, some reverb and some delay. And that's that's basically it. Just making it big and epic. Let's listen to it with and without the effects. <laughs> And then I added, as I said, it's just consisting of ARPs. I added another synth, also an ARP. It's playing the same stuff, but it's very, um, a bit more crunchy and there's more attack. Um, just to counterbalance the very washed out kind of sound. And then there is a third one that is automated quite a lot. So 
So three orbs stacked on top of each other. All of them automated a little, like going up and down, changing frequency and uh, the low cut at certain sections. And making sure to make it interesting, have movement in there. I think that's really important for, for these kind of ARPs. Also, the, the main synth sound, the initial one, should be quite short. Like, the, the, the decay should be short. Attack really depends if you want to have the tag in there or not. Release, sustain, also all, everything like shorter. It needs to be a compact, short sound. If it's too long and it like overlaps with the other notes, it, it's just mushy. And then you just add kick and bass and you're done. Very simple. I'll continue for the rest of the day and night working on the song. Again, some, some little tweaks, nothing major. Send it off to some labels, hopefully get it released. Um, maybe also sending it out to Lost Frequencies. As you know, my past two releases were released on his label. This might be maybe a fit. Let's see what he says. I'll keep you updated. See you tomorrow back again here on this channel. <laughs>